Uh, I'm here with Jason from Misery Index to talk about the upcoming new record, Complete Control, out May 13th on Century Media Records. How are you doing today? Doing good, thanks. Day's coming to a close here, but um, you know, I'm all right. So it's been a good day, Tuesday. As good as it can be, I guess. But you have something to look forward to. There's a new album, there's a tour, so there's a lot of things to be excited about. Yeah, indeed. That's that's actually what I was doing for the chat. Was um, going over the set list, uh, you know, trying to get, get the muscles in shape and uh, you know, getting ready to uh, fly to meet up with the band and begin rehearsals this week for the uh, tour to start next week. So, yeah, pretty stoked. So this is the first uh, release that you guys do with Century Media. Did that change anything at all as far as how you approach the making of the album? No, not at all. It was kind of like, like the last, this is probably the third album we've kind of written and recorded re relatively separately. Um, you know, uh, Mark and I both, both uh, moved out of Maryland in the U.S. Um, about 10 years ago. So we've kind of been uh, negotiating this um, band uh, as spread out kind of in different places. And, and this album was kind of like a continuation of that, even though we had the COVID downtime which allowed us a lot more time to kind of focus on things, I guess, and get our chops back or more developed. Um, it, it was kind of the same as it was before, you know, Century Media, new label, it's cool as well, uh, but it doesn't, it didn't really change how, uh, how we approach writing or recording it. When you look at the growth and the evolution of Misery Index, where does this record stand within that growth and evolution? Um, well, I guess, you know, going back into the 2000s, um, when I first started the band, you know, the idea was to be this kind of death metal band at the core, but one that kind of takes, takes, um, significant influence from like hardcore punk and grind a bit and kind of add that in to certain degrees to the kind of death metal we were doing. And I think over the years, it's been a kind of back and forth where sometimes those influences come a little bit stronger. Um, and some are, some of our albums are, are more uh, concentratedly death metal. I think the Heirs of Thievery is definitely more of a death metal record throughout. Uh, but this one, I feel like, I don't know, I just, uh, this one feels really special. Um, it just feels like the, the payoff in a sense. I don't know. We, we put a, we put a lot of years and work into our, you know, developing our writing and, and I think it's it's a kind of continuation of the last album, Rituals of Power, and that it's you know developed some of those themes lyrically, and it also kind of um, you know builds on those uh, those influences I talked about. But you know we're really fortunate that we you know we all write in the band. Not one person doesn't really carry the whole burden. So um, I think between me and Mark and Darren, like uh, and all our different influences, it kind of this is the album that kind of, I think where they're all kind of equal and fluid and more than ever, the songs kind of have a really good flow, I think, even though we all kind of have our own writing style. So it's, it's a refinement of sorts, I guess, I'd say. It has the creative process changed, not just because of obviously you guys being in different cities, but in terms of the evolution of the band and the growth that you guys have had from the first record to this, do you see a change in terms of the the process that you take when it comes to the creative juices of putting a record together? Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I really miss the days when we, we all kind of live together and we get into the rehearsal room and, and mess around, you know, sometimes that would lead to spontaneous kind of like um, you know, serendipitous kind of riffs that might come out from just jamming. And that's one element I kind of miss. Um, but the process itself, uh, yeah, like as I mentioned, we, we all tend to write individually. So, and then we kind of bring what we write to the rest of the band where it's kind of refined a little bit more. Adam puts his mark on it by, you know, doing the drums and arrangement and stuff. So um, I think it's, it's pretty solid um, process. I can't really be too objective about it because I'm kind of in it, but I mean, I, I think the process, other than that, the process has been pretty much the same since uh, we started, I guess. <laughs> riff writing and refinement. What, what does a guy like Will Putney add 
to to the sound and, and the refinement of Misery Index on this record? Uh, well, I think Will's, his um, capabilities help to um, bring us, bring what we're doing into like a more modern context, um, but permitting us at the same time to keep, you know, our roots. You know, I have roots that kind of go back into the early 90s and, and, um, and I, I like, I feel like the album, um, despite it being, you know, a modern production, he did manage to capture like the real sounds of all the instruments, the real drums, and it has a very you know, organic feel, um, which is often kind of difficult to achieve and master when you have so much exceptional technology available to kind of perfect the recording process. It's kind of a balance, like the human component might get lost in there. So Will has been really, awesome with like uh you know capturing the human kind of component and not you know diluting it with the technology in a sense it's it's been a really good balance in that sense and we you know we really appreciate it we think that this one is even better than what he did with the previous record with which was a power so one of the things i noticed the moment i started listening to the album is that it had exponential growth not just from a quality perspective but even how the songs came across it's just it's, it's not every day you get a record that feels like it gets better with every single song and then it finishes stronger than than how it started. Was this something that happened organically with the songs that you had at your disposal or consciously did you guys try to create a track listing that kind of had that that sort of growth? Um, I guess, you know, I always kind of think of I always think of uh, these songs in an album context and album format, you know, growing up in the 1980s and, and getting, you know, albums and, and also specifically on vinyl. I think about it in terms of sides, side A and side B and how the songs might be balanced. Um, so yeah, there was, you know, an effort to kind of keep a certain flow between the songs, what we had, um, but it wasn't, it didn't take too much. I think I wrote out a, you know, a suggested track list one night and I just sent it to everyone and everyone was like, yeah, it looks good to me. So that ended up being it. <laughs> um, you know, administer the dagger, the opener felt like a natural opener because it has almost a kind of separate intro part to intro. it before the song kicks in. So it's like, okay, that's kind of like a natural album intro. It's kind of like sets the tone, it sets a mood. So from there, um, you know, I just, I think in terms of classic records, you know, like what, how, I always liked how Maiden and Metallica records were, you know, tracked out with certain songs and moods and mid-tempo tracks, you know, in the middle kind of thing and closing out with a battery, you know, something like Battery or Dyer's Eve kind of thing that would be now defied on this record. So that's, that may be the subconscious kind of like way I was thinking about well, how it might flow. <laughs> it worked really well. So if that was how you were thinking, you guys definitely executed because the album definitely has that sense of growth and it just gets better and bigger and better and bigger with every single passing track is just a phenomenal album from from that perspective and and i know you mentioned hardcore grindcore as some of the influences on misery index but when i was listening to this record i felt like outside of those two and outside of death metal like traditional death metal there is some elements maybe of brutal maybe some elements of melodic death metal do you see misery index on this album complete control a little bit more of a of a spread out band, not just concentrating all the eggs in one single basket as far as the soundscape is concerned? Yeah, I think it, it kind of goes back to like what I was saying about how we all write. I mean, I, I have three songs on the record. Darren has two and Mark has um, four. And we all listen to, to our own, you know, diff, kind of different bands we like. I think we don't all like the same bands and those kind of influences I do think come in. You know, Darren as a lead guitarist, he's definitely influenced a lot by the 80s, you know, shredders and, and the, the old shrapnel kind of guys and things like that. So his touch when it comes in, he does have a, you know, a, a melancholic sort of melodic approach to his lead playing. And I think that adds a pretty cool dynamic to some of the other things we have going on. Makes it interesting. And But yeah, it's it's probably, I don't know, we just... It's a very subjective thing. I think we're just kind of writing and whatever comes out, comes out. It wasn't an intentional move to try to include like different styles or aspects to have them in there for the sake of it or anything like that. 
<clears throat> the sound on, on the record has the aggression and heaviness that we've always expected from Misery Index, but I think one of the great qualities of the album is that it still allows the listener to feel like you can digest each and every single piece that makes that big wall of sound with those very thick bricks. Is that Will's impact, or is that something that you guys want the sound to be that defined, that you get that wall of sound, but you're still able to hear exactly what each and single element is adding to it? Yeah, I mean, that's that's kind of like what I touched on before about how it is. <clears throat> you know, I mean, that's, there's just a lot going on. Adam is playing a lot of beats. There's a lot of drums. You know, it can be very easily to have things get lost, you know, but we were very, if anything, we very, we prized um, among us all the riff and the value of like having a good, strong, like driving riff is be the key focus and be the, be the, um, you know, what kind of carries the song and it should be, you know, upfront and dynamic. And I think that, yeah, Will, I mean, he captured, he captured what we had to, you know, what our sound is. I think he's probably figured it out by now after seeing so many hours uh, in front of the computer mixing us <laughs> the last two albums. And I think that, you know, we, we retain that, wanted to retain that, that power in the mix, but also, uh, show the sort of humanity in there as well. So I think uh, both of those are there. We're pretty happy with how it came out. When it, when it comes to the lyrical content, maybe even perhaps to the sound to a certain extent, do you feel like this is a biographical record in terms of the experiences that you guys have gone through during the pandemic and, and leading up to the making of the album? It might be, but um, it wasn't anything intentional. It may be, I mean, if anything, we had we definitely had more focus. There was down significant downtime in 2020. Um, you know, where we all would all sit at home and write riffs and, and practice our instruments and maybe get a little better at them in certain ways and kind of got rid of bad habits and things. So, um, in that way, maybe it, it's come. It, there is that it does have that sort of pandemic stamp on it. Um, but I can't say one way or the other if it would have been different um, otherwise. But it it, it it's what it is. It's a product of the times, I guess, in a lot more ways than one. <laughs> uh, was there any specific challenges on this record vocally that you felt like that were interesting to overcome and to work with in order to develop? Yeah, vocally, I mean, uh, I guess we're pretty set, established in our ways vocally, but I've always liked tried to push myself a little bit um, to be to enunciate words a little bit more clearer, but also kind of retain the power and the rasp behind it. Um, so yeah, and actually, I mean, a lot of what I did as a demo for the vocals we kept, I did it, I actually recorded the whole album as like a demo of vocals and a lot of them were, we thought were good enough that they were actually the takes that ended up in the album. And the one thing we tried differently is the beginning of the album, Mark does a kind of uh, more of an open kind of angsty kind of, uh, screaming kind of yell which is kind of different for him so i don't know if we're going to experiment more with that in the past but but other than that i think it's uh mark and mine's vocals are pretty uh pretty uh in the, st in the style they have been in previous records i guess <laughs> well, the tour uh, around the corner i mean you guys hitting the road in may a uh, new album coming out at the same time what can fans expect as far as the set list is concerned, are you guys going to concentrate mostly on the new record? Um, I think that we, sh you know, we usually, uh, I mean, just for personal preference too, I think that if you have a new record out, maybe and it's not out yet because it's not going to be out when the tour starts, but we will, I think we're going to do two, at least the two singles that have been released so far, The Eaters and The Eaten and Infiltrators. Um, the next single is actually coming out um, this week, on Thursday, um, Complete Control, the title track. That might make it in there as well. But other than that, you know, we have, we've been around for, you know, this is our seventh album. So we have, like a lot of bands, you know, we have the kind of go-to songs from certain albums, which we, you know, detect are, are more interesting for the fans. So we kind of keep certain songs in the set, you know, they're always kind of there. But we do have a couple which are kind of deeper cuts, I guess, that, that might make an appearance too. See, I, I had to ask you, because I'm going to see you in Toronto. I think you guys are playing at the Velvet Underground. So I, I kind of want to prepare myself physically and mentally for what you guys are going to hit me up with once you guys come to Toronto. 
Okay. <laughs> well, I think, you know, we're meeting up uh, in Kansas City to rehearse um, this Sunday as the first. So, rehearsal. So, I think, you know, we're going to decide mostly then, but, you know, I think there's certain songs you can expect that we, and they're always kind of in the set, like the Carrying Call and the Great Depression, for sure. You know, the ones we've been playing for a while, but, um, but we'll mix it up. <laughs> Well, one last question for you, and this is perhaps one that's difficult to answer because you're so involved in the process. Sometimes it's hard to see the forest for, from the trees. But is Complete Control the most complete album from Misery Index to date? I'd say so. I mean, it's always typical for any artist to kind of be the most pleased with their most recent work. And <laughs> I feel like that's, if I say that, it's like kind of what I'm doing is like echoing that. But I mean, I mean, I am. And it's like the... You know, there's a certain, um, I don't know, uh, I guess I have been saying that this word before, but refinement, I guess it's kind of comes with, when you, we've been playing with together for 10 years with this lineup. And, um, you know, we have, uh, we have our boundaries and I think we pushed past previous boundaries and we, and we, we progressed as musicians and songwriters with this one. I think it's, that's just the way I feel. Maybe other people don't hear it that way, but I think that I can honestly say, yeah, that this is the one where we kind of got it the most right, I think, than, than we have before. Well, for, for whatever it's worth, I agree. The word that I normally use is maturity, even though, you know, it depends on how you interpret the word maturity. I'm not calling you guys old. Yeah. I'm just saying that I'm just saying that I feel like this record is is the one where all the pieces from Misery Index are perhaps the best tied in together as one in order for the collective to be super strong and not just have great individual tracks. So I, I thought the album was phenomenal. Thanks, man. I'm glad to hear it. That's, that's kind of what we were hoping for. Well, Jason, thank you very much <laughs> for your time. Uh, enjoy those practices, and I'll, I'll see you in Toronto during this this tour run. Thanks, Pedro. Say hi. We'll see right. you there. Take care, man. Bye. Cheers. <laughs>